So moving on to the actual lighting workflow side. Um, so lighting artists would usually be using gaffer three nodes to set up the lights in the scene at this point. Um, and because Katana scenes can be set up with a combination of Katana and USD data, you could use gaffer threes here, um, even though a lot of our scene is set up using native USD locations. However, with this release, you can also make use of USD light nodes um, to add your lights in natively. But just to reiterate what I mentioned earlier on, uh, this is the first step towards a full USD lighting tool set in Katana. So it's not the final solution. However, it does allow for the creation, manipulation and editing of lights right now. So I'll drop down a USD light and this will be for our sequence lighting. And then in the parameters, we can choose a light type here. And I'm just gonna choose a um, Pixar dome light. These light types will be populated based on the um, render that you have loaded in with Katana and their compatibility with USD. Um, so we can see that we have all of the different Pixar lights as well as the standard uh, USD lights. And I'm just going to rename this light here. Um, we could also choose a different path for this, but I'm going to leave that as it is and just rename this to dome light. And so once we have this light, we should be able to see it in the scene explorer and in the viewer as well. Um, and we can use the transform handles to manipulate it in the viewer because manipulators for USD locations are supported in this release as well. Um, so you can just scale it up. And then I can set off a live render just to make sure that this is all working correctly. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that my live render updates for USD and the Katana side are all working as I do have some elements of the scene on the Katana side. Cool, and it looks like our light is working. Um, so if I have a look over in the parameters again, we can see that we have all the usual uh, light parameters. So the color, exposure, intensity. So I could increase the intensity and this would be reflected in the live render. And what I can also do is I have the backdrops imported into the catalog. So I can make use of the monitors underlay and overlay feature to use the backplate as the underlay so that I can see it, um, my render on top of the backplate. Um, now you can see here that this isn't quite working as expected. Uh, and this is because my light is visible in the render. So we're getting the um, render of the light um, as well as the render of our uh, T-Rex character. Um, and to fix this, we can do something very similar to what we did in the look dev scene um, by using a uh, USD schema set node to access um, the parameters for this light um, and turn the camera visibility off. So let's jump to my scene explorer. And I'll just grab the dome light location and we want the Pixar Attributes API. And then we should be able to find uh, the visibility and we can just change the camera visibility to zero. Um, and then we can see now that we have the um, backplate nice and visible uh, and the light is not actually rendering out. Um, we could also make use of the Nuke Bridge uh, in this case to have a really nice um, preview of, of our render in the context of the comp. Um, so with any sort of grading and any other integration that we might want to do on the comp side. Um, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to um, use the underlay and overlay features. Cool, so then I can continue to make some changes. Um, so I'm also just going to add in um, the HDRI into the texture file path here.
and we can also change the light color slightly And I'll just decrease uh, the intensity a little. And I'm not going to spend too much time uh, refining this for the purpose of this demo. So I'll add another light. I'll just um, drop down another USD light here. Um, and this will be our key light. So this one, I'll have it in the same location and I'll just rename it to key light. Um, and I'll choose a light type. This time I'll choose the pixel rec light. Um, and again, we should be able to see this light in the uh, in the viewer. So if I select it here, I can scale it up. You should be able to see it. Um, and then I can use the transform handles to position it a little bit better in the scene. And then again, we can um, have a play with the parameters. So if I increase the intensity a little, jump back to the monitor so I can see it in the context of my backplate. Um, and I'm just going to change the color of this light to try and match some of those um, highlights over here, as this light is coming from the sun. So we sort of want it to match some of these other highlights that we're seeing on the trees. Something like that. I'll just make it slightly lighter. And again, I'm not going to worry about refining this too much, uh, just for the purpose of the demo. So I will just leave it as something like that. Um, but again, you can sort of be playing around with these lights as much as needed. So now we have our sequence level lighting. Um, and let's say we're happy with how this is looking. Um, I'll just rename the lights just so that it's really clear. So we have our dome light. And we have our key light. Um, 